more wins. That's right, eight more wins. That's all David Shaw needs in order to become Stanford's all-time winningest coach in terms of number of victories. Already, the current Stanford coach, Shaw, has amassed 64 wins, only 17 losses in six seasons. By the way, if you're curious, the record holder for most wins as Stanford head coach, Pop Warner, back in the 1920s. Barring something just completely unforeseen, that record is going to belong to David Shaw's before the end of the season. Again, Shaw only needs eight more wins. And last year, you know, you know, Stanford didn't look like they were going to have a double-digit winning year. At one point, four wins and three losses with five regular season games to go. Well, Stanford got hot during the second half of the season, running the table, including winning the bowl game to finish at 10-3. and three. May not have seemed like a double-digit winning season to Palo Alto, but that's exactly what it was. And as you can tell by that fact in the bottom of the screen, they're used to double-digit winning seasons. And they got a shot at that this year because they got a lot of talent coming back on both sides of the ball. Talk about offense first. Christian McCaffrey, we know how much he's going to be missed for Stanford. Of course, he had that big time 2015, the Heisman Trophy runner-up. Last year, in terms of the stats, wasn't as big, but still very productive. And McCaffrey, first-round draft pick by the Carolina Panthers. So who will handle the load now for Stanford? I think primarily it's going to be the backup from last year. And Bryce Love, Stanford fans got to love this. Love averaged a little more than seven yards per carry, one of the highest averages ever for a Stanford back. And they've had a lot of good backs at Stanford. So Bryce Love will get a lot more action this year. In terms of the quarterback play, we'll see if Keller Chris can get action to begin the season. Now, Chris, you might remember in the bowl game against North Carolina, suffered a major knee injury. It's been rehab, rehab, rehab from that time all the way to this point. Um, did see a little bit of practice time in August um, in terms of the early um, team drills, though. Did not. And I've been doing my best to try to find out if he's going to play in the opener against Rice, which, by the way, is earlier than a lot of teams have to play their opener. Stanford's opener is on August 26th, and it's in Australia against Rice. So still trying to find out if Chris is going to start the season. Now, Chris, a year ago, his completion percentage, not very overwhelming, only 58%, but he only threw two interceptions. Now, another guy who got valuable time at quarterback last year for the Cardinal was Ryan Burns, who had a higher completion percentage at um, 61%, but threw more interceptions, seven, than he did touchdowns at five. So that has to make you a little bit nervous. You're a Cardinal fan. The other backup is K.J. Costello, who saw quality playing time during the spring. Those three quarterbacks, Chris, Burns, and Costello, are the only three on the Stanford roster who were on scholarship. And speaking of the Stanford offense last year, you know, not just going to blow your socks off, only 26 points per game. The running game was their foundation. Of course, they run, you know, a multiple offense. Never know what you're going to see, but it's primarily the run. That much we do know. A little over 200 yards per game rushing is what they averaged, which is fourth best in the Pac-12. But the passing, uh, dismal numbers, uh, dead last in the Pac-12 in passing. And that's just because of their style of offense. 158 yards per game is what they averaged through the air. But they do have experience back as far as the wideouts go. Trenton Irwin, a returning starter. He's a junior. Had 37 receptions a year ago. You return to tight end in Dalton Schultz, 6'6", 242. Um, had 23 receptions a year ago. Um, all Pac-12 player from a year ago also contributed with a touchdown. And another wide out to talk about, a guy who will get a lot of PT coming up barring injury, uh, J.J. Arcega, white side of speedster, 15.8 yards per kick. So it looks like you can count on that guy. All but one of the down linemen returned for Stanford. They were um, not very experienced last year in this department. Got to remember, uh, they gave up 34 sacks a year ago. So you think the maturity and playing together will help them this year, and it should. Looking at the center position, uh, Jesse Burkett, Started all 13 games last year, now a senior. He's already on the Remington watch list, so he's got some accolade there. Left guard in Nate Herbick, last year as a freshman, uh, started six games, played all 13. And here's a little factoid, too. When Herbeck started, Stanford never lost. Perfect 6-0, and so there's a little irony for you. And uh, the other guard, not as much starting experience, but did play all 13 games. That is Nick Wilson, a junior. Now, looking at the tackle positions, they're very experienced in this department. Uh, David Bright, um, one senior who uh, started four games at left tackle, the other six at his natural position of right tackle, and running out the Stanford offensive line in A.T. Hall, also a senior, started and played all 13 games. 
and uh, started all but two of those games at the left tackle position. Now, looking at the defense, the Cardinal, uh, led by the defensive coordinator in Lance Anderson, put up some very nice numbers. How nice? Well, Cardinal last year was second in the Pac-12 in points allowed. Only 20 points given up per game, one of the best averages in the country. That's the good news. You know, and also good news, too, they had 37 sacks per game. But some of that sack production is gone. Big thing for Stanford, who runs a 3-4 defense, can they get reliable defensive in play? They certainly did last year, and Solomon Thomas was a big reason why. But he's now in the NFL. In fact, he's playing not too far away from Palo Alto, playing in San Francisco for the 49ers, trying to make an impact for them. So $64,000 question, ladies and gentlemen. Can defensive tackle Harrison Phillips, a senior who had six and a half sacks last year, get support from his new full-time starters on the defensive end side? That's the part we don't really know. One defensive end you got is Dylan Jackson. Last year as a freshman, had 15 tackles. And the other defensive end didn't get a lot of playing time either, but has been around. He's a senior in Eric Cotton. So I would say the concern right now for the Stanford defense, who was so good last year, remember too, they only gave up 144 yards of rushing per game. That was fifth best in the Pac-12. You know, can Stanford get pressure on the quarterback from the outside? While the defensive line is somewhat of a mystery, the linebackers should not be. In other words, we should know exactly what to expect for them, which is absolute tenacity and, of course, plenty of experience. All four linebackers return. All four are seniors. Obviously, you have continuity. You have chemistry. These guys know each other like the back of their heads, and that will be of some major advantage for the Cardinal entering 2017. We'll begin on the outside with the reliable Joey Alfieri, who had four sacks a year ago, 51 tackles, not to mention a couple of interceptions. The other outside linebacker can play as well, and Peter Columbayi, now a redshirt senior, 48 tackles, 10 of them, though, were for loss. So you've got uh, Columbayi and you have Alpieri, two reliable outside linebackers. And on the inside, Bobby Okariki, 39 tackles, three sacks. And the other inside linebacker, Kevin Palma, now a redshirt senior, 42 tackles. So all four seniors, all four have been there. Secondary, I think, is going to be real good, too, despite losing Dallas Lloyd, a very talented safety. Replacing him, Brandon Simmons, who played a little bit last year, 15 tackles. The other safety, very reliable, and Justin Reed, who had seven pass breakups last year and very active in tackles with 57. One corner returns in Quentin Meeks, a junior with two interceptions a year ago and 19 tackles, and the guy that got some playing experience last year at the other corner in Elijah Holder. And one major area that Stanford cannot continue to shoot themselves in the foot is kick returns. Okay, last year, dead last in the country out of 128 teams in yards per kickoff return. Not even 15 yards per return. Now, you might say, what's the big deal about that? Well, one, 80 teams last year had at least 20 yards of kick return average. Some, by the way, had kick return averages of 25 yards. That makes a big difference, especially in close ball games, because when your offense has to start from their own 15-yard line or their own 17, and they go three and out, that means the opposition is probably going to have barely more than half of a football field to work with, which means even if a drive stalls after 20 or 25 yards, they're kicking a field goal, or basically you're saying, okay, all you got to do is move it 55 yards for a touchdown. So field position, especially in close games, can make all the difference in the world, even 5 or 10 yards there. There's no reason why Stanford shouldn't get at least 20 yards per kick return. So that is a statistic to watch throughout the 2017 campaign. The schedule for Stanford, well, the season opener is going to take place pretty soon. August the 26th on a Saturday night, Central or Pacific time, by the way, against Rice. It will be in the land down under Sydney, Australia. Now, good news for the Cardinals is that they get two weeks to prepare for game number two. It happens to be the Pac-12 opener, and it's against USC. And you got to figure that the Trojans rank in the top five in the country already, we're going to be pretty angry after what happened last year when Stanford absolutely had their way with the Trojans. Now, you can see the rest of the schedule. A couple of games worth pointing out, and these are difference makers if Stanford wants to win the Pac-12 North. Against the Washington schools, last season they lost to the Cougars and to the Huskies by a combined score of 86-22. to And you got to play at Pullman this time, which won't be easy. That'll be early November. But the Cardinals get the last three games 
in Palo Alto, and that will include a showdown against defending conference champion Washington. Vegas right now says that Stanford is at 8.5 wins. That's the win projection this season. I'm going to say 10 wins because, hey, when you have a lot of reliable defensive players, even with the loss of Solomon Thomas, I like the linebacking core a lot for the Cardinal. I think that plus a secondary that I think will be pretty good as well gives Stanford a chance in every game that they play. They won't go undefeated, but Stanford knows a thing or two about double-digit winning seasons, and I see no reason why this year will be any different. Plus, a very experienced offensive line will help in the mix as well. Stanford won't win the Pac-12 North, but I do think they're good enough to get a New Year's Six Bowl invite, a major bowl. Pretty good for the guys from Palo Alto. That's my look at Stanford. We'll see you next time.